The Moon, one of my most favorite and most despised subjects. I say most despised because if what my natural tendency to believe is true, and there's nothing more to consider about what the problem is with the human race and the world. Now, there's nothing more crazy sounding than when you get down to conspiracy theories about the moon. And I'm not even talking about just the Apollo missions uh, or NASA's supposed cover-up about it all. But going even further to what the moon is, its actual purpose, and its effect on us as people. I've gotten some legitimate, I mean, some valid complaints from some of my viewers that uh, I don't, you know, call myself world philosopher, but I don't get into uh, the particulars of various modes of philosophy. A valid, valid point, valid argument. I proclaim that I intend to, but I wanted to lay a ground, uh, a ground headquarters, so to speak, of my reason for even considering why it, I'm desperate to apply correct philosophy with regard to going forward into this jungle of <laughs> civilization, as it's called, in the modern age. Because, in case you haven't noticed, the great philosophies of yore have not been applied, or if they've been applied, have not worked on the masses as a whole. I want something that's going to work. So I'm trying to work out the possibilities of that. Okay, the most extreme thought thrown out there is that the moon is a decorated machine. It's not a natural satellite that was broken off of the Earth and due to some collision or the formation of the solar system. That it's more like the uh, Death Star in Star Wars. Uh, David Icke, of <laughs> all people, even, I thought that myself, you know, I thought, you know, kind of looks like the Death Star, uh, especially with the, the round, you know, uh, dark areas of smooth, what do they call it, the, the oceans of the, the moon, the sea of tranquility, looks like the, the laser gun circle on the Death Star. All right, um, it's contended that the world was a whole different place before the moon arrived. It was placed there by other beings, other worldly beings. And that it's a machine that exudes resonance, which basically holds human beings in a trance and shuts us down, basically. We were super beings that uh, we, with our me mental telepathy, we could do things with our minds. And this device enslaved us, took away our supernatural abilities, or at least with resonance and frequency manipulation, our brains cannot access those parts of our brains that can do those amazing things. Here and there you'll get a savant who, because of certain genetic or through the birthing cycle, uh, they developed in a way that the areas of the brain that are triggered by the moon's machinations and the way it's designed are not affected and therefore those people are not enslaved in the same way and you, they can do amazing things, they can calculate math very fast and they can see the future and, and play music without having been taught and all kinds of things. Um, it goes, pr it's pretty extreme but what backs it up are, are, are the logistics of the moon. It's huge. And the way it faces the Earth exactly, precisely, there's no anomalous anything about it, that through time, the eons, as the millennia go by, it does the exact same thing, without error, despite the supposed 
um, just powerful, attractive force that is the Earth's gravity has no effect over time of pulling it closer or anything or it's clockwork precision that is unwavering unfaltering um, really smart physicists know that that's impossible unless there's something else going on and it you know look at it look at all the craters there's millions of them no one has ever, in, in recorded history, seen anything hit the moon. So we're supposed to believe all those craters happened in the formation of the solar system when everything was chaotic and... or something else. Maybe there was a war. Maybe there was a, a, a defense of the people on the Earth that were fighting the aliens and the moon and all those craters are... are pot shots. Only to realize that the moon is made of titanium under all that dust and rock and you can't penetrate it with anything. So all those craters are exactly the same depth for a reason. And they are all exactly the same depth. But when it comes to data about the moon, you can read something about those scientists, they can, it's probably all nonsense. And, and, you know, who knows? Once you realize this one part's got to be a lie, then you've got to factor in that maybe all data that you could read about the moon is a lie, and that all you can actually know for, your, for, for a fact is what you can see by yourself looking up at it. Uh, most powerful telescopes on Earth, nobody can see the Apollo <laughs> remnants. Super magnification, you're gonna see them. They're not there. Apollo 11, all of them, not, not, nothing's up there. What's up there? Uh, there have been all kinds of claims, and these people are stifled. Anybody that's ever taken a photograph or tried to... There are buildings up there. There are things up there that don't look like anything a human would make, and they're gigantic, they're structures that are miles high and wide, and uh, they're always rubbed out of photographs by NASA. If you ever notice that um, you'll never see an amateur close-up photo of anything on the moon in a uh, publication by a serious publication. Never. Uh, all photographs of the moon that you see in anything close-up of the topography are cleared by NASA. If you look at it real close, there's all these smudgings, real particular smudgings. This is pre-Photoshop, you know, they were doing that 30, 40 years ago. Um, but like the lunar landings, it, 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 just something about that that's just so quintessential. Oh, it's so frustrating. Things like that, where they broadcast it all around the world, and they had the whole world in trance watching that. And it was a big hoax, and they pulled it off. You know that shot of Neil Armstrong getting out of the, the lunar module, and his classic line, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind? You, you think anybody would say that? What has ever sounded more theatrically scripted? That aside, the camera shot is from away from the spaceship. Now, some of the NASA people say, no, no, it was from the arm of the one... Uh, leg of the limb. No, it's too far away. I'm a photographer. I, I've shot I've saw, shot footage for television. I, I, I know all about camera focal length and that angle was taken from 20 feet away from the spaceship. Now, that aside, you, know, you don't even have to go to the particulars, like say, oh, well, there's no blast crater, or oh, 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 there's no wind on the moon, the flag's moving. That's, that's no-brainer stuff. And you shouldn't even have to go to that degree of it. When you're talking about going to the moon, it's one thing to go in a spaceship and, and go just outside the atmosphere in orbit. It's another thing to go 238,000 miles, and that's just to get there. To come back, you know what I'm saying, you're talking about a half a million miles. Do you know how many times around the world that would be if you flew in an airplane? Now you can argue, well, in space you don't need as much gas or fuel. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, you want forward motion? You got to... Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, your momentum isn't going to be um, held back by wind resistance, but still, you gotta. 
Whatever. Um. No. We didn't go. It's impossible. Um. Go to the Smithsonian Museum sometime. If you, have, if you go to Washington, D.C., I mean, I urge anybody who lives in Washington, D.C., or anywhere near there, just take it, get in the car and go. Go. They got what they say is the actual LM, the LIM, the lunar module, sitting there. They say it's the same one that came back from Apollo 11. You're looking at it, and there's no thought that'll come through your mind other than that looks like something out of Flash Gordon. The um, insulating material around the bottom, the gold tin foil, it looks like tin foil because it is. It looks like the most hokey thing you ever saw out of, like, you know, elementary school thing. You know, it just looks ridiculous. And they don't let you inside for a very specific reason. Because if you went inside, you wouldn't see any controls or any monitors or gizmos. You'd see cardboard. And you're looking at the, the, the engine under it. And if you put some thought into it, you realize that, okay, the upper part is where the astronauts were, and they're sitting in their chairs, and they're about five feet above a nuclear caliber engine. As if that's possible. You know, I mean, it's just not. The power that would have taken. Oh, just all the things. A human being needs a certain amount of oxygen, needs a certain amount of air pressure, to have the internal functions of their body conduct themselves accordingly in a biologically secure way. You cannot reproduce the effects of a mile of atmosphere and the pressure of that of the planet with a machine. Definitely not a machine that could fit inside of a garage. And you cannot replicate the temperatures that would combat the temperatures that are just invariants out there with the spacesuit, with a backpack that's wrapped in what? Medical? Medical bandages? All white box with an antenna? I mean, how much more of an insult to the intelligence do you have to endure? And when they say one six gravity, do you know what that means? Say, like, if you're a 150 pound guy and with the suit on, you're 200 pounds. You know what one-sixth of that is? Do the math. That's how much you would weigh. Now, with your physical strength, can you imagine yourself weighing one-sixth of what you do on Earth? How high you'd be able to jump? Those guys did not jump high. They moved around slow and they hopped around, but they didn't leave the ground any higher than you would on Earth. And, but that's even a no-brainer. You know, it just... Human beings cannot exist outside of the particulars of the Earth for any more than a few hours. Your body would shut down. Your, your, your heart and everything about you is connected to the pressures and the realities of the atmosphere of the Earth and the gravity of the Earth. We are Earthlings. We're never going to be able to exist anywhere other than here. Science fiction is great. You know, the idea of going to another planet, you can't do it. You can't do it. Well, anyway, I think it's key, you know, to go to the next level of consciousness if we're ever going to really, really break out of the slavery that we live in and the, just the ridiculousness of human society as it exists at the moment. We have to break down these, these lies. Recognize, I mean, if the moon is a machine that was placed there by our, either our creator or our conqueror, you gotta know what's going on here. You know, I, I, it definitely affects people. Like when it's closer to the Earth in its orbit, it's documented by scientists. You know, people's moods change. Everything about our, our tolerance, temperance, and, and emotional state is governed by whatever position it's in. And you know how, like, uh, like it just, you know, the time of day when you're motivated to do something is exclusively um, related to where the moon is. You know, so I, you know, sometimes people want to go to sleep not because it's dark out, but because that pulsating energy is too strong and it's make knocks you out. Uh, all kinds of things, and it's just 
I just want people to wake up. I don't know, it's frightening. I you kind of don't want to know if that's what the moon is. They say it's a... The extreme people, extremists say it's hollow and aliens live in there and they're all super mental, interdimensional beings that really just... They don't really understand us or feel any empathy for us. They just... They kind of experience things through us. And a teleportation through the ether mental state kind of thing. Kind of like we're a drug. It's like we're the cannabis that they smoke kind of thing. I don't know. But what bugs me is that why does NASA get to know all this stuff? Like I said, why? Why do the scumbags in power get to be in on the truth of all that, but we can't? You know, and we, we, we outnumber them, and I just want the doors broken in. I want NASA stormed. I want the truth to come out. I want people to have some gumption and courage and find out what, what the truth is and let everybody know. We totally outnumber them. I want... I want television stations ransacked. I, 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 want, I want all the people in government ripped out of those buildings. And I'm not even talking treason. I'm talking about establishing a republic as it was laid down in the Constitution in the United States. Change where the capital is. Abandon Washington, D.C. Start all over, but with the same Constitution. And just have those people, just Janet Napolitano, Barack Obama, just in prison. You know, all of them, just gone. And we actually have democracy where our leaders, there can't be a career, like a politician cannot be a career. It's, it's, it's a moment in time where they're serving the public. And then when they're done with that, they go back to their lives, you know. And have, once they're in a public position in politics, everything's monitored. Their life is no longer their life. Their bank account is seen. All of their transactions, personal transactions, monetary is able to be accessed by the whole public to where we all got the password to their bank account and uh, we get to see everything. Total transparency. It, it, it's a public figure working for us. We're their boss kind of thing. Or else, no. There's just the availability of bribes and lies. It's just too monumental. Well, this is supposed to be about the moon. I'm going to shut this off, but you get what I'm saying. It's just like... Those moon landings, it's just lies about all of that. No man has ever gone there. Whoever owns the moon, they wouldn't allow it. I know people that have done astral projections, you know, people that can... I believe that people can do that. And when they can kind of... They all claim that when it comes to going towards the moon, they've all said this, a voice comes to them and says, No, you stop right there. You can't go any further than here. We don't allow your astral projection to go see what's going on in the moon. We are the moon. You are the earth. You stay there. They've all claimed that. And um, so I believe that something major is going on. And we should be lucky that it's not worse. Because if they're that powerful, they can do anything. I want to overthrow the people in power of the United States. Uh, I don't want to overthrow the United States. I, I, it's not treason to rip criminals out of office. Anyway, that's enough. I think you get the point.